why do a lot of Filipinos go for foreign men? Now, this is an interesting one because it was actually brought up um, by Dale as well today, and it's a topic I've covered and I've sort of tried not to be too direct with it, but ultimately, a lot of the women I've met, uh, spoken to, and I'm married to uh, foreigners as well as people I've met in the Philippines that are looking for foreigners, is one of the things they commonly come up with is they're fed up with the local men. Now, this isn't coming from me, it's coming from the the, the women themselves, and Dale's also brought this project uh, project of thought up as well today. Because one of the big problems you've got in the Philippines, it's a bit like Russia. Russia's got the same problem right now. Um, alcoholism is a major problem. Um, domestic violence is another problem. Husbands that don't want to work, another problem. Um, a lot of the guys disappear on the women if they become pregnant, etc. In my barber, the phrase he used trying to get me to go with his sister while I was getting a haircut. Bear in mind, I only met the guy five minutes earlier. And I told him I was married. He said, one wife, uh, one wife, many girlfriends. And that's from my own barber. And he did introduce me to his brother, his parents. And even then, still trying to get me to go with his sister. Um, that is a problem. You know, they're, they're, they, this is why a lot of women in the Philippines can be quite content with not a lot because quite simply they see a lot of the problems around them and an expat often <laughs> I would say always um, is financially stable um, although a lot of them do drink drinking is a big problem in the expat community I would say the chances of a bit abusive partner is probably less um, but also, you've got a lot of aging guys, which are quite simply not really fussed on doing a lot else beyond going on forums and YouTube and stuff and just chilling out and doing stuff. They're not really bothering anybody. And for a lot of women, that's fine. They're quite happy to go along with that. It's peace and quiet. Bills are paid, food on the table, roof over their head. And a lot of women are content with that. And it's why sometimes you'll see people say, oh, well, you know, people want to dominate the women because they're Philippine. It has nothing to do with that. At the end of the day, a lot of the guys, it's quite simply, they they uh, complement each other. Guy may be older, got cash, whatever. Generally, not bothering anybody. And the woman is quite happily just doing her stuff. And because they sort of tie together, it works. Now, um, where that sort of goes a bit weird is when you get guys that are not used to dealing with a lot of women. Because um, you do get approached by women on a lot. I mean, not not just like once a week or whatever. You, I mean, you go to the shopping mall, you could get approached four or five times in an afternoon. You know, women approaching you either wanting you to pay for services or looking for a new boyfriend or whatever. It's why you'll, you'll, you'll see things on forums and stuff where people have randomly met somebody on a ferry boat or something, the next thing they're living together. Um, I've even known of people that have actually veered from where they were going. You know, at the end of the day, um, somebody was supposed to be going to meet relatives in Makati or something and just not gone. They've gone with this complete stranger they met 40 minutes ago and they moved in together and six months later married and living together. Um, there's a lot of things in the Philippines that may seem a bit strange from a Western perspective. I do know a lot of my friends are heavy drinkers. I mean, um, even, I mean, some, I've got some very good friends. I mean, even some of the priests and stuff I know will have a few beers when they come over. Uh, same with some, um, yeah, you know, let's just call them pastors and pastors and priests. Um, but yeah, they'll drink some red oils with you. In fact, they'll actually want you to because they'll want to buy it at your place because they want to come over and have a chat. It's a bit weird. <laughs> People come into your house, but they know we own the store next door. So they'll actually want to buy some beer so you can sit and have a chat about things. And often it's, it becomes a bit of a therapy lesson uh, for some people because they have problems. Okay, won't talk about it too much. They have problems within the church, but they can't air it. So they'll actually come and chat with me. We'll just have a few beers and actually tell me about stuff going on. Um, 
because quite simply it, there's nobody else they can really talk to because either people see them as a pastor or a priest or they're connected with the church in a way that they can't really express what they're really thinking or saying. Um, I mean, one of the things that was bugging, well, I know it still bugs him now, is when you get some of the abuse issues in the church, the the priests have to make a decision that they want to leave themselves. Now, a lot of these people are beyond hell. They're not first offenders, let's put it that way. Um, but the church won't kick them out. It's really weird, but I'll leave that at that. But fundamentally, a lot of the women want a better life. And although, I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you're in Western society, people don't, like, a woman wouldn't look at the guy on the curb that's drunk, falling over, and think, you know what, that's, that's the guy I want to marry. He, he, he's he's the man for me. No, that would never happen. Unless they knew them as a TV celebrity from years ago and there's some sort of connection there from whatever. Anyway, but it, it'd be a very, very rare scenario. They're more likely to choose somebody that's look clean, tidy, smart. And I know a lot of people are um, focused on people being attractive to the eye and age is often an issue I've got it I mean we got got in this discussion before about age um, because I know some women have said no I, I wouldn't marry an older guy and then you go what about George Clooney oh yeah yeah I'd marry him and I'm, what about and you, you just go so you would marry an older guy if it, you know if it was based on physical or yeah appearance or the fact that millionaires, one of the two. But the point being is, although people say, well, I can't be good, I wouldn't do it. There is always something that would actually say they would do it. And the point getting back to is, if you're used to a society where there is often a lot of problems, and you get somebody that has a lot of time for you, has a lot of um, ability to look after themselves and make your life sustainable and stress-free, etc., then you're going to get a lot of matches, as simple as that. I know myself, just within the, the Filipino guys there that I know, there is a lot of stuff that goes on. Um, I know a lot of the affairs and things people get up to. Have you... <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to mention the, where. The, there was a supermarket where there's a lot of intermingling, to be polite. But the... The point being is, is, it's very, very common. I mean, the call center industry, a lot of, sorry about the noise, dogs barking outside. A lot of the, um, um, I try not to use any foul language. A lot of the intermingling when call centers late at night in some of the big places where they'll go into the back office and stuff is out of boredom and stuff. But the fact is, it becomes part of the norm it, to the point that they actually put the statistics together relating to the AIDS caused by the call centres. Um, there is some fundamental things that I think get driven by boredom. There's a lot of stuff where people do not have a focus. and I mean, it's not just the Philippines. It's a global phenomenon, just in different ways. You look at the UK and the problems relating to some of the problems around London uh, the last couple of weeks um, around the, the knife crime, etc. The point being is a lot of that is not just the fact that it's, a lot of it's cultural, a lot of it is being gangster and all this sort of stuff. A lot of it is just boredom. There's a lot of stuff out there where people have got no drive to push them forward in life. There is nothing... Nothing pushing them to the next level in life. There's there's no driving factors in it. And it, it's a bit sad. You know, at the end of the day, you look back, you know, myself, um, you probably know I like Alan Turing. Um, I like the code breaking stuff. And I've always been in the computer since I was like six years old. But the point being is I was driven by technology. I was, my enthusiasm started at that age. 
and it's continued. Um, that's why I'm more technology based than anything else because I love technology. But a lot of people don't have that. They'll they'll come from a background where maybe nobody, you know, majority of people don't even have a job. The, if they've got a job, it's at the bean factory or whatever. There is nothing inspiring them to push forward. And I think this is one of the things, you know, the point being is this is where you start getting into the realms of teenage pregnancies, these bad relationships, heavy drinking, blah, blah, blah. Because fundamentally, there is problems relating to society that drive it in every country in different ways. The difference with the Philippines, though, is you've got this. It's, it's a different colored skin. Instantly, you're recognizable as being different. So instantly, you must be different. And, and they'll know friends that are married to an American, a British guy, a Swede, a Dutch, whatever. And the point being is, they see, even, even if the relationship is bad, they see this very, very narrow view of it. Very narrow. They see their school friend that the I mean, for example, when I went up to this place up in the mountain, it begins with T, I can't remember the name of it. The kids didn't come back to school after lunch because they were too tired because they don't have enough um, food. You know, it's not that lazy. It's just that the fact that, that it's on the top of a mountain. By the time they travel backwards and forwards, they don't have enough energy. I was talking to April's uncle about the same thing about, because um, when I was a kid, I used to skip a meal at lunchtime because uh, I would save the money up to buy computer magazines. Um, but he said if he, he skipped a meal when he was a kid, he would faint. Um, but the point being is, um, even with that, there is a very different change in life. So you've got people that don't have a lot of spare capital, They're, everything's hand to mouth, day to day, and then suddenly their school friend, who's now, whatever, got married, turns up, even if it's a fake Prada handbag, the fact is she's gained weight, doesn't worry about money, took her and her friends out for dinner, and you're thinking, I want to be like that. And at the same time, this woman's looking at her boyfriend that has been away for two days, no no idea where he's been. He loves his tan I. If anything, he's normally coming asking her for money for tan I. She works, he doesn't. And some of these issues. Yet, you're looking at this woman that's 30, maybe, 28, whatever. And her classmate's looking at her and thinking, why am I with this guy on the floor, drunk, blah, 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 when I could be doing this? I could marry somebody, even if they're older. What's the difference? If it's down to a down to a materialistic thing, then that's one thing. But a lot of it is actually survival. And actually, even if it's an older guy, the fact is, you're going to get a better lifestyle. You're going to get a better standard of living. You're going to have a better quality of life. You're going to have more opportunities. And then at the very end of that, often there is what is called second life. Marrying somebody that's 68, 70, you know they're going to have about 10 years in them, um, especially in the Philippines, because obviously you become more prone to some of the stuff that kills people regularly. If you are in the Philippines, I do recommend um, having... Uh, Oh, I just forgot it now. It's uh, I can actually imagine the plant is outside the house. There's certain herbal plants that the the locals have, and it's why people sometimes live into the hundreds up on the the mountains. Not literally, it's two hundred or whatever, like a hundred and one or whatever. <laughs> um, uh, I forgot the name of it. It's like quite. It grows very, very thin and tall, um, but you'll find even in our place, people come and steal it. They're allowed to take it, but the, the point is they'll pull it down, cut it, and they'll they'll brew it up in, boil it up in water. Um, but the point being is, there's a lot of herbs there people know are good for the health. But the point being is, if you're an older generation, I do recommend taking some of the stuff that's actually known locally, and I will. 
you know what, we were talking about it yesterday and I just, it just slipped my mind completely. Ah, uh, frustrating. But anyway, even for somebody that's a bit older, there's this thing called second life. Second life is when the guy dies and the woman may be 45, 50 and she can marry again. The difference is a lot of time they've got pensions, a lot of time they've got uh, house paid for, etc. They're in a much better position. We have a friend here in the Philipp uh, in Spain. Her husband died. Um, he's, a, he's a, I think he's Dutch. Now I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to say how much she gets a month. That's that's a bit unfair. But she she's got a nice, nice lump sum for as long as she's not married. So she cannot marry. Um, otherwise, you just cut the money off. She's got a good widow's pension. Um, but she's doing really well. <laughs> You know, I know she lost her husband, but financially she's doing well and they were together a while. Um, it's very hard for me to tell the age of some Filipinos. It's, it's, I, th I would say she's probably 38, maybe, yeah, about 38 max. Um, but got a kid, happy, living in Spain, doesn't even have a car, gets taxis everywhere, living a good life. Um, I can understand why some people would choose that. She's already got a condo in the Philippines. She's already, you know, done her one day millionaire stuff. Um, so I think now she's sort of settling down. She's already sorted a lot of stuff out for other people. So now she's just chilling out. But the point being is, this is what drives these things forward. If you look at Thailand, there is even songs on the video key, karaoke machines about um, women that leave their villages and, you know, they go, I remember, you know, it's things like them being <coughs> like dirty faced, bad teeth, all this sort of stuff in the songs. And then when they return to the village, like years after, she looks like a princess, blah, 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 because the life has changed so drastically. Now, is it all financial? I would say no, because finance is just purely financial driven. It's more complex now. A lot of it is survival. A lot of it is um, just looking for a better life. And it's, although it may all sound financial, but it's not just that. It's being able to have three meals a day. It's being able to make sure you've got a roof over your head. It's survival. Now, it doesn't mean that all women are like that. And I mean, my wife, for example, university graduate, good job in the Philippines. She was actually, she sponsored her own sister through uh, schooling as well. Um, independent woman, and there's a few of them about. And at the same time, I do know several uh, wealthy Filipino women as well that do look for foreign partners because a lot of them have had or still married to um, Filipino guys, but quite simply, are separated or divorced. Or, you know, if they're rich enough, they've got divorced elsewhere. But the point being is, they're independent women, and they're not looking for an overweight guy or whatever. But it, some of them do like the Koreans, the South Koreans. Um, but they are still looking for foreign men, even with all the wealth. They're, they're all far wealthier than I am. Um, I mean, some of them, you, they are on a permanent holiday. Um, but ultimately, it's fine. You know, and they, they, they're content, but still want a foreigner over a uh, Filipino guy. But that's their personal choice. And you will have wealthy people that only like Filipinos, etc. That's fine. In the same way, fundamentally, that's like being nationalistic, you know, in some ways, that you would actually marry people from your own background, etc., your own country. But my personal view is live and let live. And some of it is linked to poverty. And I would say, be realistic. Be realistic in the sense that, as somebody brought up uh, this week relating to their partner, still using the mobile phone, even though they've been married for a few years, sitting around the house and just, texting whatever the family back home where there seems to be a bit of social disconnect even in the house that is not relationship that is more a case of you need to have a good good talk and bring things back on board or 
change the relationship. There's a person I know whose wife, anytime somebody's at the home, she'll just go upstairs and not talk to anybody. If she, you meet them in the car, you'll be talking at the car window and she'll just be sitting there on the phone. I'll tell you that now, if I was in that relationship, it wouldn't have lasted a day. I'd have got rid of her straight away. There is, that is not a relationship. That is A, very rude, but B, it's somebody that I don't even know what's going on in her head. She's not connected to anything beyond her mobile phone, her friends that are elsewhere, and even from her husband, she is not connected with him. It's, I couldn't live in a relationship like that. I have very low tolerance for those sort of things. I'm sure a lot of other people have. But there's a lot of people get into relationships that sort of decline that way over time, where, you know, they meet... She's all over them. Everything's a yes, you know, happy for this, happy for yes, yes, love you, blah, blah, blah. And then as time goes on, it sort of whittles down to mobile phones, guys sitting on expat forums and stuff, and the woman not really connecting with the guy beyond that. Not really connecting with the social aspects as well. I mean, I've got to admit, my, my wife went on a few uh, expat stuff, but because she doesn't really like connecting with um, other expats from some of the experiences. <laughs> I mean, some of the expats are not great people, to be polite. But, yeah, I mean, even, even sitting at McDonald's around some 80-year-old guy that was looking, after, looking for 19-year-old girls and complaining one of them hadn't met him. And then he was showing, April had gone into Gasano, come back, and he was showing her a magic trick as if my, my wife was some sort of an idiot. Um, that guy is obviously somewhat wrong with him. Um, a, I wasn't bothering anybody. I didn't invite him to sit at my table. But B, his assumption is everybody's exactly the same as him, which is going after young, young women um, and just bed hopping and whatever I can't be bothered with that I, I, for me it just it's not for me you know then the day I'm quite content with my lifestyle I'm quite content with being happily married I know a lot of people don't have that same view the men that go their own way is a prime example they they see uh, a lot of them see that marriage is a burden etc for me it's not really a burden it's it, it's you know, like, spend time with my kids and stuff is important to me. It's part of my life. You know, it's part of what I enjoy in life. So when you get people that are purely driven only by sexual desires or whatever, um, I'm not saying men go their, go their own way, do that. I'm just saying this guy at McDonald's was. Um, you do sit there and think, your life's sad. If that's all you've got in your life, that is pretty bloody sad. You know, a guy... 70 something chasing 19 year old girls it's just sad um i won't use the word vulgar because it wasn't i don't know the guy that well it's just the fact is he was sitting there saying i've i've got this girl on this t you know she was supposed to be here meeting this girl in naga da, da, da. i'm just thinking whatever go away don't bother me um but yeah sometimes you meet people like that and this is one of the reasons you will find people that are long-term expats, may not say it publicly, but they don't like a lot of expats. Um, they're from different social groups, and that's one of the things people forget. It's in your own culture, your own society, your own country. You may not intermingle with people purely because you're in the, even in the same street. You know, at the end of the day, those people that are in your same street, you may not even like because of the way they are. Um, so the assumption that every expat should talk to every expat is just absolutely crazy. But sometimes people assume that, oh, you think you're better than us? It's like, I'm just not interested. You know, at the end of the day, if you want to go and do that thing, if you're doing something illegal, that is not my business. That is the business of the Philippines uh, government. Um, but ultimately, as several people have brought, brought up, a lot of the stereotyping has changed over the last few years. I've got to admit, I mean, even talk to Dale. Dale 
went out to the Philippines at 22. There are several people, well, sorry, that's unfair. There's a lot of people I know now that are under 40. I mean, myself, I was in the Philippines under 40. But going back to when I first moved out to the Philippines, I'd probably say the average person was at least 58 and up. A bit like here, Tolavecha. The average person here is probably, I mean, I was talking to Denise yesterday about it. I think that you probably talk about 60, 65. Um, so you got to take those sort of things into account. You know, at the end of the day, things do change. And I do think there's a lot of reasons that younger guys, A, are looking for partners from the East, but at the same time, there's a lot of guys that are men that go their own way. And I should cover that topic because um, I can understand it completely. And I, I've got to admit, when I um, was single, I was not looking for a relationship. I was quite happy being single because um, I'd been in a relationship for 11 years, come out of the relationship and financially had a lot of extra cash because up until that point where I was paying for things like horses and other things which were nothing to do with me, but it was just part and parcel of being in a marriage, well, sorry, in a relationship. I shouldn't even have been paying it, but anyway. Um, but as the breadwinner, you you sometimes just let these things go. But ultimately, as long as she was happy, I was happy. And financially, I wasn't really struggling anyway. But when I was single, I suddenly had the ability to do a lot more. Um, in a sense, I was looking at buying a new Porsche. I was actually looking at moving into a six-center apartment in Birmingham and was changing pretty much my entire lifestyle from living in Worcester to moving more city centre living. Um, because I'd been doing the one thing, and I'll be honest with you, although I was happy in the sense of um, some things, the drudgery of life was quite boring and bland. Um, not my partner's fault. It's quite simply, I, I need to be doing more. This is why when I come to Spain, I'm still working a lot of hours. I still, when in the Philippines, work a lot of hours and doing stuff I want to do. When we did the pace of pacer machines, it wasn't a case of, oh, just go and buy them. I wanted to build them, so I did. And that's one of the things you do get in the Philippines, is the space to do that. Spain's a bit like it, but you need, where we are, it's a bit more difficult, but I'm seriously thinking about getting a small holding at some point. Um, because it'll give me a workshop so I can play around with stuff. But ultimately, ultimately, you've got to make that decision for yourself what you want out of life. And this is why we're talking about the a lot of Filipino women. There's a certain point where they recognize that they're not in happy relationships. They're not going to reach the potential. Or they get somebody walk in that they've known for a long period of time and their world has changed. You know, not a little bit, I'm not talking about an extra three pound on your pension like British people received this week, I think. Um, or is that three pound a month? I'm not sure. But uh, ultimately, <clears throat> they're having something put in front of them that actually says, you know what, your life could be changed by just changing your partner. And yeah, yeah I do see it in the UK as well. I know um, a friend of mine who broke his back. Up to that point, happily married, nice house, nice car, stable job, job that's going to run forever because it was a food factory. And he fell off a ladder, slipped down, broke his back. Stuck in traction for over a year, lost the house, had to move to his um, in-laws. His in-laws pers persuaded his their daughter to divorce him. And now he's the same age as me. Back with his parents. Uh, sorry, back with his dad, because uh, his mother died a while back. And the, the point is, where's the hell's the loyalty? Um, yeah, I think that's gone for a lot of people these days. And this is part and parcel with the guy with the McDonald's. I don't know if he's got burned in the past, where now he just treats things, people as objects or whatever. But my personal view is. Like with my in-laws, and I've brought this up before, 
I look after them. You know, at the end of the day, I can afford it. It doesn't really hurt me financially at all. At the same time, I also built it in to our economics. I built into the fact that we built parks and stuff where the money actually just self-sustains stuff in the Philippines. So I already built that into our lifestyle. On top of that, I can understand why other people don't want to do that. And they also they complain about their wives sending all the money home. I can understand it. But a lot of this starts at the beginning. When you first meet, when that woman is the most beautiful woman you've ever seen in your life and she loves you and all this stuff, that's when you need to have these conversations. First one being communication. If anybody wants money, anybody asks for something, they could ask you, not her. And then you start diverting the family away from her because all she has to say is, he's already said he won't give me any money. If anybody wants to ask for money, they're going to go and speak to him directly. And that's it. Job done. A lot of the manipulation and stuff you work on to remove it because it's not, you're going to have a lot of good family. You know, you could have the bad. Um, you've just got to build it into the beginning. Once you've got the solid foundation for a relationship, the rest will grow over time. Anyway, and I would say at the beginning, it is not love. It's often interest, financial reward, personal appearance, things like that. Love takes time. And some people wait a lifetime to actually find somebody to fall in love with. So it may never even happen. But the point is, Look at everything logically in the beginning, and if it all works out, and you do actually hit the girl of your dreams, and she meets the guy of her dreams, then that's that's fantastic. Thanks for watching.